So as you can see, I'm at the very beginning of, uh, of the session. So we're playing uh, completely readless at this point. Um, you know, so these first couple of hands are like rush poker. Hooray. Um, how much fun is that? Uh, but yeah, so we're, we're playing readless and what we're going to do is go through together and establish uh, reads on our opponents. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pl taking a ton of player notes. Okay, so um, let's figure out our strategy for very early game. Uh, what do we want to do? Table of um, unknown opponents. Um, how do we establish how we want to play? Um, this sort of gets into a bit about how rush poker is played, but um, what I feel like I definitely want to emphasize is that um, the reason rush poker doesn't work is because all of these plays which I make um, are probably close in EV, but they become plus EV because I'm allowed, well, because I'm able to then use the information which I gather in future hands. So because this BW forever guy will always be to my left, and he'll be sitting there for you know pretty much the entire session, I can raise a hand as weak as queen eight here uh, because I know that I'll be able to get some reads on his post slot tendencies, and then he's not just gonna like fly off the side of the screen, and so I get absolutely no read whatsoever, or I, I can't use my read um, on him whatsoever. So I feel like um, you know it's it's sort of sort of likely that limping. Uh, under the gun um, is kind of weak. So, and this guy calls as well. I figure that's sort of dead money often enough. Queen eight's not a great hand, certainly not a bad hand. But what I want to do, my early game strategy when I don't know any of my opponents, is I want to play pretty loose and pretty aggressive. Um, obviously, that doesn't mean I go shoving stacks like a moron, um, but it does mean that I'm putting pressure on my opponents. Um, the reason that I want to do that is because A, um, and most importantly, um, I feel like it's plus EV. I feel like he folds off enough, either pre-flop or post-flop, um, for me to make this entire play plus EV in a vacuum. But B, I want to establish as quickly as possible where the guy, where the holes are in this guy's game and this guy as well. So the more information I gather from the table early on, um, the earlier I can uh, establish my exploitative strategies for my opponents. So that's why I'm raising Queen Eight here, and why I think that raising is better than. Um, raising is better than flat calling or folding because we get more information that way but I want to make sure that you understand um, I'm putting a huge disclaimer out there I am NOT raising for information okay if I had seven deuce off here I would fold I'm raising because I feel like number one he folds often enough but number two I feel like I can either take the hand down post flop or my queen eight has enough equity to like you know spike top pair and he'll turn his hand face up to me or you know some spike some kind of a hand that I can show down so I am not just raising for information very very important uh, so let's keep going and he just folds okay so immediately and uh, immediately and conclusively I have a read on this guy you know obviously this guy um, you know I, I can't continue but let's check out um, you know what we can say about um, uh, about this BW forever guy okay so he we know that he limp folded he limp folded under the gun but he also did it really quickly Okay, so he didn't even think before folding. That's a really huge read already. Um, you know, even in one hand that we have against this guy, we already know that his limp fold, his limp range, limping range in early position is extremely weak. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to be widening our isolation raise, uh, isolation raising range versus him from all positions. Because if he's going to limp fold that quickly without even thinking, um, then um, yeah, that's that's going to be pretty much plus EV for us to go ahead and um, isolate him very wide until he adjusts.